This old farm's like the Chevrolet yearbook, class of 62. The last video I showed was the muscle cars on the farm. See, they sold for really, really strong. The auction where this old car was sold happened to be on the same day. So luckily a friend of mine was able to go inspect it for me and I arranged to call in a bid. And this old thing sold for, uh, let's say quite a bit less than the other muscle cars on the auction where I was at in person. Been total cloud burst out here all day and so I'm just wanting to get in here and get this thing yanked on the trailer and get it home before the sky opens up again. So I'm gonna be in hustle mode. So this was the old Nova. Yeah, Chevy 2. Chevy 2, I guess they didn't call it a Nova yet in 62. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, I've got, the, I've got the paperwork and title and stuff in, in okay. the house. I'll, okay. We get her. Stuff will. Okay. Yeah, very good. So this was your aunt's car? Yeah. And she bought it new, and yeah. then your kids drove it? Drove it some. Yeah, yeah it's back and forth to Kansas State for a while. Yeah. And, it, but it's been set. I see on the tag, I think, it looked like uh, 87 was okay. the last we tagged it. Okay. Yeah. Did this thing run when it was parked? Yeah. Think so? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that ought to be a fun one to tinker on then. And well, I'm <laughs> hoping so. See what she'll do. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping so. Uh, okay. I I felt bad that I, I, at the time I didn't have a shed to put it in. Yeah. And then, and even though I had a shed, didn't have a shed, I should have should have had it up on blocks. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it hurt it too bad, so... Well, basically, you know, it isn't all beat up. Yeah. A little rust, but it yep. isn't isn't beat up. <laughs> yep. About the worst as ever it went, my daughter had clipped off the road and, and clipped the sign and it took the uh, chrome strip off this side and I can never find another piece to oh, put on. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's the worst it, worst it ever in fact I think I think the spare tire and it looks like brand new wow <laughs> good deal yeah got the rim and everything yeah yeah okay I'll get her get her loaded on what do you you got uh, that tilt no I'll just use the winch there I mean does the trailer tilt no no it's just a flat deck so yeah, I brought some other wheels along. Hopefully the brakes aren't locked up, but we'll see. <laughs> I see.
and it should be fine. Okay, load it up. Just enough air to spare. <laughs> this old farm's like the Chevrolet yearbook, class of 62. This is the big brother, the 62 Chevrolet C60 grain truck said this one had a 327 in it that ran but you can see getting pretty rusty overall these old farm trucks just don't have a tremendous amount of value around here you can really pick if you want a good one you can buy a good one for probably 2500 bucks so this one unfortunately was bought by the scrap man so kind of a sad demise for it but price right now is really really strong so it would have taken a lot to save it but did save this old 62 chevy 2 and it'll be on the way home Quick rock around, here is the 1962 Chevy 2. This is a two-door post. I believe in 62 you could also get the two-door hardtop. And this was kind of a more conventional approach that Chevy took to the compact field. In 1960 they had brought out the Corvair and some people were into them, some people weren't, and Chevy was like, ah, eh, we're just going to cover the whole line, you know, make sure everybody that would want a traditional front engine, live axle, regular rear-wheel drive car, that they could have one to pick from off the model roster. And so this was it, the Chevy 2. Pretty plain vanilla literally plain vanilla car it's kind of weathered down to a good patina here see this whole side of the car they did repaint and old guy had said when his daughters had driven it to high school there that they had gone off the road one time and hit a mailbox and so Unfortunately, it peeled off all the passenger side trim moldings. The good thing is, though, that they really are not specific between driver and passenger side. So for getting a set from a parts car, uh, wouldn't matter which side they come off of, so that's... I'm not a statistician, but 50% better odds for being able to find them anyway. You can see a little more patina here on the driver's side. The guy was kind of concerned that they had let the car sit outside. He did feel a little bit of guilt for not giving it a spot in the shed. And I kind of told him you know that's not that big of a deal i mean the rust that this car has in it isn't anything beyond what commercially available patch panels can fix and so there really isn't too much to say other than the sun did really cook the interior on this one you got your door panels seat stuffing all of that really coming apart i'll get her jacked up here and open it up show the inside unfortunately too having sat out it's got 
pretty good gaps in the weather seal that have come open so a guy would definitely want to get that out because see that a lot on Texas and Oklahoma cars and stuff out west the sun just totally cooks them and they really don't rust from the salt but they will rust over time from sitting just by having the floors fill up with water from the gaps in the weather seal. You may have caught it in the footage of me loading the thing, but this front passenger wheel did have stuck brakes. I was fortunate that the other three were free. So yesterday when I was loading this thing, eh, it was a little dicey with the weather. When I was coming to the farm to load it, it was just literal cloudburst pouring rain. And so I was a little concerned about what was going to be involved to get the thing out and was just fortunate to be between clouds. And I really wanted to get this thing drug on here the absolute quickest that I could and get back on pavement and get out of there. So I didn't stick around long enough to free the brakes. So today that'll be the job. And then... Once I get this thing up a little bit, I'll open up the interior and the trunk. Once it's up on tires, it'll clear the trailer fenders there, and then we'll take a look inside of her. Quick look inside, really basic car. It is the automatic transmission, power glide. It's got a radio, it's got a heater. I believe heater would have still been optional on these. Find that sometimes on your Southern cars, not really ever any heater delete cars up this far north. Got your plane dash, no pad. Mice have been in there, but not horrible. Security car care, the standard dealer. A few little relics and trinkets inside. Meter out of order, please help. Motor out of order, need to buy a valve. <laughs> Meter, okay. Uh, find your accident plan of action there. Got the windshield cloth for when it fogs up. From the rain, of course. Got a ice scraper. Knowles. Phillips 66 service in Manhattan, Kansas. 1407 Denison. I always think it's fun to go back and look on Google Street View and see What's at those addresses now? Got a base for a compass. Rayvac workhorse. Got a, probably a watch case. Maybe a jewelry case. 
puppy dog with happy 17th birthday. And then this is the Park It Auto Parking Guide. Unfortunately, the mice have kind of chewed up the instructions, but based on the picture there, put that guy up on your dash with a suction cup that's not very viable or pliable anymore. And that would tell you the proper angle for turning your wheel or lining up to the next car to parallel park. Kind of a cool piece. Old registration slip. Empty box. Here's a litter bag. These usually will have a name on them. Keep America clean. Don't see any name on that one. That was a common advertising piece of the era. So you can see the mount under the dash where they had the CB radio, the little clip for the mic. Out back there's the antenna on the trunk. Kind of a relic of the 70s. Back here, hope oh, we got a little rusty wrench. 3 8 and 7 16 likely. Not too much in the back seat. See the funky 60s era upholstery. Pretty cool. Got some vintage plastic wrappers. The ashtray from artificially flavored strawberry YNS candy, it says. Put those back in. Check the front. Oh, a good non-smoking car. Probably a house key there. Will I be lucky and find a silver quarter? No, 1974. Copper penny and a zinc copper penny. 1980, 1983. Yeah, one more. Ashtray, and then the search is complete. Empty. So I will do the trunk. Don't have a trunk key, so gonna have to pop the back seat out and crawl through. Super dusty. Guy said that when he was in that trunk, there was a spare tire that looked almost brand new, so I'm pretty curious to see if that's a uh, original assembly line spare or not. And check the mileage. Pretty worn down, looks like 74,000. It's gonna be a guess anyway. Got the trunk latch unbolted, so I'll take a look inside here. Forgot to catch Skaggs dealership badge in Manhattan. It's got the sticker, not the little chrome emblem. And inside we have, looks like a BF Goodrich, Silvertown, and it is actually a recap tire. You can see the sanding marks where they clean up the old carcass to put the new cap on. So not the assembly line spare, no big deal. 
Got your original trunk mat, original bumper jack. It's all good stuff to have. One oil can spout. Got a weird plastic dipped covering on it that's come off. See, got the water leaked in from the back window there, so it'll be real important to get this cleaned up and cleaned out so that it doesn't get any rust going in it. See, down in the corners there is a bit of crunchiness there, just to go along with the rear quarter rust. Passenger side a little more, which is generally how they come because the road grime and the salt all gets shoved to the side curb of the road. The car's really straight up front. You see, obviously, front fenders. They do repro these front fenders. Kind of on the fence about. Had the thought of just kind of sectioning that, try and save as much of the original GM assembly line sheet metal as possible, but probably about as much work to do that as it is to scuff a whole fender and match the patina on it. So, six of one, half dozen of the other. Pop the hood here and show the most important part of what makes this car what it is, and that is the assembly line four cylinder engine. So many of these have just been used up and cashed in for scrap. And the survival rate of an original stock correct four cylinder for Chevy two is very, very, just pretty original car overall. Grab the fan here. And it does rock. They said this car was running when they parked it, and the kids just graduated high school, graduated college, and they didn't need it any longer, so it got parked. So I'll show you the before, and this is the after. See, 
Got her straightened out, dialed in there. Looking good bit better than it was. That flat, large center bar, you can still see has a few dings in it that'll need to be tapped out with a hammer, but that's the major straightening completed on it there. Caltag is located on the firewall next to the heater blower motor. First line of the Caltag is 11D, which is the build date, 11 being the 11th month, November, D being the fourth week. This is a relatively early production car being built among the first 11,000 to roll off the assembly line per the serial number. Style 62 denotes the 1962 model year. The model number after that has a bit of confusion because the 04 denotes a Chevy 2 300 with an inline 6. Chevy 2 300 with an inline 4 should have had a 03 designation, so there's a bit of confusion for this data tag that I haven't yet been able to clear up. If you have any insight on this, definitely drop a comment below. The 1 1 denotes a two door sedan body style. KC denotes the Kansas City assembly plant. Chevy 2s were built around the world. St. Louis, Norwood, Ohio, Oakland, California, Willow Run, Michigan, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Antwerp, Belgium, and Vienne, Switzerland. Trim 762 is fawn cloth and vinyl bench seats. Paint color 938 is Adobe Beige Single Tone. The Chevy 2 moved from concept to production very quickly, taking only 18 months for engineers and designers to bring it from a concept to a production vehicle. Even though it went quickly, no corners were cut on engineering ideas or production quality. The entire front of the car, subframe and inner fenders, could actually unbolt from the rear portion of the body from the firewall back. Revolutionary design concept and body construction. The heart of the car was Chevy's new four-cylinder engine. The first produced by Chevrolet since 1928. The four-cylinder was obviously designed for economy. Chevrolet also designed a derivative six-cylinder which was the basic four with two extra cylinders. Backing them up were manual transmissions and an available light duty power glide, which was air cooled. Another really basic feature is the single mono leaf rear springs. The mono leaf rear spring was an amazing design marvel with many desirable characteristics over traditional stacked multi-leaf springs. It gave better ride, weight savings, performance, all at a lower manufacturing cost. This pioneering four-cylinder paved the way for many successors after it, including the Vega, Cavalier, and many other Chevrolets still in production today.
Yeah, unfortunately that hood hinge is broken, so I'll have to search up a few parts for this car and won't take much to get it back complete again.